So the first thing that you want to do is open your web browser and go to the University of Minnesota Department of Theatre Arts and Dance website. It's easy to remember either dance.umn.edu or theater.umn.edu. Then once you're there, you'll click on Departmental Calendar, and then click on Barker and Rarig Center's Space Schedule. Sometimes it takes a little while to load. Here you'll see a list of all of the spaces in the Barker Center, People Center, and Rarig Center that you can schedule. If you're interested in more information on a particular space, you can click on the link and there'll be a pop-up, sometimes with a photograph and other information about the space. So what you'll do is navigate to the day when you want to make your request by using this calendar over on the left hand side here. And notice the legend at the bottom of the page that shows you what the different colors of the blocks mean. So you can see if something's a scheduled course or if the space is closed, etc. Wherever you see white space, that means the space is available. There's nothing scheduled in it and you can schedule something there or you can make a request at least. So on the day you've chosen, click the time in the space that you wish to reserve. So I'm going to uh, reserve Studio 300 at 4 o'clock on this day. So I'm going to log in using my uh, University of Minnesota username and password. This is the same username and password I use for my email and other systems at the U. And you have to fill out, as you can see here, all the fields that are labeled with red. So in the event name, you're going to describe what your event is. And in the Barker Center, usually this is your first and last name. Choose an event type that best describes what you'd like to do. Some common ones are rehearsals or meetings. The sponsoring organization could be a student club that you're with, or it could be your department that you're a student in or your faculty member of. So I'm going to put in theater, arts, and dance, and I just type the first part of the word and it comes up right away. You'll type in your expected head count of how many people are going to be at your activity, and you'll see here that the start and end date and time are defaulted based on what you selected in the white box that you clicked in the previous screen. You can make adjustments here to the start and end time. Um, I wanted it at the space, let's say, at 4 o'clock, but I want to go until 6 o'clock rather than 5, so I'm going to change that here. You can use the repeating feature here to um, add multiple dates or times to this request. Um, and as you scroll down, your space preference is going to be defaulting to the space you clicked on in the previous screen as well. You can make changes here if you'd like. Comments to scheduler are just notes that only the scheduler will see. So for example, let's say if Studio 300 is not free, please schedule me in Studio 200. And then the scheduler will see that. And a description is a mandatory field, and um, it can be a brief sort of description. And I'm going to write rehearsal for a class assignment. I'm going to click here. I understand as a requester of this event, my contact information will be viewable on the departmental web viewer. And that's simply a privacy measure so that you're agreeing that your information is essentially going to be public. Click on the next button, and then you'll see a summary of your request. If you need to make changes, you can go back to the previous screen by clicking Make Changes. Otherwise, you submit your request. And then up here, it says Event Request Confirmation. Now, you receive an automatic email message that's computer generated that says, we got your request. It looks like this. And notice it says this email message only confirms receipt of your request. In other words, it doesn't mean that your request has been granted. You know your request is confirmed when you receive a second email from the scheduler. And you can see the language here, your studio confirmation is attached. You want to view the attachment, and you'll see the details of your confirmed request within it. In this case, my request was not confirmed, not scheduled, so I see canceled here in red lettering. Normally what you would see is the space details underneath the time information here. What you'll want to do is print your confirmation 
and have it with you when you use the space. So in case there are any questions during the time you're using space, whether it's security or another person who thinks that they have the space reserved, you'll just want to have your schedule, your confirmation with you. And that's it. <laughs>